Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Cindy Novich, and I'm on here with my friends Chesley and Shondalyn, and we're so excited about Earth Day and celebrating, which is, you know, just something that I think a lot of us, especially now, want to pay attention to how we can take care of our Earth because there's so many things happening um, that aren't so positive. So, what can we do to make it more positive? And that's why we're going to share with you about growing with Tower Garden. So I thought it would be fun to also share with you that we have, for anybody that does a purchase um, of the Tower Garden, we have a gift of, um, and we'll talk more about that at the end, but a uh, $20 gift for seeds. And then we have one of three items you could pick from, and you'll learn about these, but the rock wool, these are net pots or the clips. So we'll talk about that at the end and you'll see how you use these as well. Um, but anyway, it's always fun to get a little gift with a purchase. So I thought um, maybe Chesley, you want to start since you're outside and just talk about your outdoor tower garden and show, show it off a little. Yeah, it's actually running right now. So that's perfect timing. Um, so here, if you guys can see that, um, I hate to move it too much, but so if you can hear, hear the water going a little bit, so we got some kale growing, we got some chard, we have some tomatoes, we have some, um, goodness, bok choy, and then up top, we're kind of doing some um, herbs trying to figure out this camera I'm not a, I'm not a videographer sorry <laughs> so okay. um, but you can see that and you actually could probably see the water as well trickling um, from up top all the way down as well so but we put this in I oh gosh I think it was probably sometime in March I think we're kind of getting into week four uh, and then we have these is what my husband just planted out um, last week. So we have some more lettuce. As you can see, it's just kind of budding up a little bit. Um, and the rock wool um, as well. Uh, our one basil is actually growing out to the side. So maybe that's meaning good luck. I don't know. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking as I guess. But um, anyway, but yeah, we was so easy. I like it because it's, you don't have to use dirt and it just seems a little bit less maintenance in my opinion. And it's just nice how you can just put them in those little pods and stick them in the tower garden. It just kind of does its, its business. How do you do the so, tomatoes? They're a big plant. They are a big plant. Yeah. This is actually our first time growing the tomatoes, but they're more of the cherry tomatoes, but they'll, that's why we have this cage right here because I it can grow that. out and rest day yes ma'am okay okay and you really only want to grow one or two tomatoes because they will take over your tower they love it so you just have to be very um you know I thought the first year I was going to grow four tomatoes even though I was told to only grow two and I didn't listen to my sponsor <laughs> my person that shared this with me and I had to rip two of them out so so they absolutely love it. And um, yeah, so I would just uh, just do one or two, but um, that's great. And just Shondalyn was showing you the rock wool, but just, um, you know, you put your little seeds in there. I mean, Shondalyn Chesley was. Seeds go in there and then you'll get vermiculite. That's that little, I don't know, crushed stone or something that goes on the top. And then you keep it watered and your little seeds will pop up and the roots can grow out of the bottom. But we'll get- well, they what they said the seed packet would tell you how many seeds to put in but i didn't see that so i just put a couple in each one okay um yeah let's we can go over that um too more at the end i think there is some information about how many seeds can go but shondalyn always has probably all the answers for you good um, yeah so Shondalyn, why don't you um, go ahead and start? You can share your screen or however you want to, maybe you want to show off your tower first. Actually, I'm going to share my tower on my screen. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I'm downstairs um, in the basement tonight. So I, let's see here if I can, the sun. 
slideshow mode. Okay, so my name is Shondalyn Anderson. I live in Virginia and I love growing in the tower garden. So we're gonna talk about how um, the tower garden works um, what and where you can grow your tarot garden, different uses um, that the tarot garden is being used for, the benefits of growing in the tarot garden, and then the cost and the cost effective cost effective if I cannot talk tonight, cost effectiveness of growing in the tarot garden. So this is my raised beds in my backyard. And Every year we do the backbreaking work of, you know, making sure that the soil is refortified and, and everything. And every year I've had my husband add something. And about the time that we had just planted everything in the beds, I get a phone call from my girlfriend. She just kept sending me these tower garden videos and I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know anything about them. And I kind of kept blowing her off. And so finally she called and she says, you have got to look at this. So she sent me to the corporate website. I looked at it and then I was fascinated. And I called her back and I said, I think I want one of these. And, you know, it's always better to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. And so I went ahead and I ordered one. Now, it's not like sneaking in a box of shoes, you know, where you just kind of bring them in in a bag and you just stuff them in your closet. About the time that the UPS guy was dropping all these boxes off on the front porch, my husband was pulling into the driveway. <laughs> so he was like, what on earth did you buy? And I kept saying, just wait, you'll see, you'll see. And so as I am putting this thing together in our sunroom, he keeps walking by looking at it. And he's like, what is that? And I said, it's a tarot garden. And he says, and what do you do with it? I said, I'm going to grow plants in it. And he says, well, what kind of plants? And I said, the same kind that are out in the yard. And he's like, well, where are you going to put that? And I said, on the deck. And he says, he was looking at me like I had two heads. He says, we just did all of that work and planted all of those beds. And now you're telling me you're going to grow on the deck. And I said, yes, I am going to compare growing in this tower garden to what's happening in the ground all summer long and see. And so it was it was quite interesting. But what I learned is that you can grow vertically in an aeroponic um, growing system just about anywhere. You can grow your own produce without the time and space commitment that traditional gardening has. And, you know, and it it seems very simple. I've been an avid traditional gardener for over 30 years. And so this was like easy to me. Um, you can grow a wide variety of organic produce, both inside and, as well as outside. and when you think about it, growing in the tower garden takes up less than a three square foot circumference um, anywhere that you want to have one. Like I have one in a corner upstairs in my sunroom. It grows 30 times um, more, three times faster, and it requires 98% less water than that of a traditional garden. So this is how the tower garden works. <laughs> Tower Garden's state-of-the-art aeroponic vertical garden system uses both water and air to produce more colorful, better tasting, and incredibly nutritious fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Tower Garden has a 20-gallon reservoir at its base that stores the tower tonic nutrient solution. Developed by experts in plant and human nutrition, Tower Tonic Mineral Blend enables superior plant growth and better nutrition from your tower garden produce. The process begins once the seedlings have been placed in your tower garden. Here they will be nourished with Tower Tonic Nutrient Solution. Inside the reservoir is a small, low wattage submersible pump. The pump pushes the nutrient solution up through the tower to the top. From there, the nutrient solution drips through the central tower using a special device that evenly cascades the solution over the exposed plant roots. On the journey down the tower, the nutrient solution feeds the roots and becomes highly oxygenated as it cascades gently down the reservoir. This process is continuous, providing fresh oxygen, water, and nutrients to the roots of the plants. This patented aeroponic process enables food crops to grow faster than they would in soil, so they can be harvested more often. And it makes Tower Garden the healthier, easier, smarter way to grow your produce. 
So this is my tarot garden first summer on, on the back deck. Um, I grew all kinds of stuff. I was a amazed i would go outside and i would look at that tower garden it seemed like every 15 minutes i was just so fascinated with what was happening on there and things were growing so quickly um on that tower garden i was just shocked um we we had a lot of rain that first year that i was growing in the tower garden and so what was happening in the tower garden was actually surpassing what was growing in the ground. The tower garden, you can control what happens in that reservoir, whereas I couldn't really control what was happening in the ground. Um, but it it was huge to me. I mean, just to see how, um, how quickly things were growing and how quickly I could harvest things. And I grew all the way up until November on the deck. And I really didn't want to take my tower garden down because I had all of these, you know, all of these greens that I was picking off of there. I was just like, I don't want to break this down. So I bought another one and I started that one inside in, in the, in the basement. And it, then I bought another one. So I have a total of five tower gardens right now, but these were growing downstairs in my basement last year. I just cleaned them out and I'm putting everything outside, but I grew everything from peppers to tomatoes, um, all kinds of greens. And I will tell you, it tastes very different. I, I loved it. This is a bok choy here. Um, I was just amazed at how well things grew inside. And I, um, I only had, uh, I only grow cherry tomatoes inside because you don't want anything that's going to vine out from underneath the lights. But I really do. Um, I love growing in the tower garden. It's just been one of the easiest, cleanest, most efficient ways to garden um, that I have come across. Now, there are two types of, of tower gardens. You've got the tower garden home um, and then the tower garden flex. Um, the tower garden home, um, I like to call that the sexy one because it's got all those curves on it. It's a 13 gallon reservoir at the base and you can plant 32 plants. You've got um, microgreen ports at the top and then you've got your full size ports um, at the bottom. It lasts, um, I would say with mine upstairs and I have pretty good sized plants in there right now. I probably add water maybe once a week, um, not often. Um, but the, the flex is the one that I like. I have four flexes. I like them for a number of reasons. I like the flat top on them so I can put my seedlings down on that base. Um, if I, you know, need extra space to store plants. Um, I also like that it's got that 20 gallon reservoir at the base and it creates a substantial amount of weight. Um, so that if you live in an area where it's windy or, you know, you've got, the elements where it may push that tower gardener around a little bit that has enough weight in it to kind of keep it steady outside. Um, the tower garden home has caster wheels that are built in, um, in the base of it. So um, it, it's nice. Either one of them, you can move them in and out of the elements um, as you see fit. So I get a lot of questions about growing indoors with the lights and, um, so when you think about just the sunlight outside, I mean, what we're trying to do with the lights is replicate what mother nature does outside. But these lights, um, if I have a sunroom upstairs that's just full of windows, but even though there's sun coming in those windows, it's not enough light to grow those plants efficiently inside. And when you think about our windows, our windows are rated with UV protecting um uh, screens, you know, in that glass. And so um, it's stopping some of those UV rays that the plants actually need to thrive. So you want to have lights on your tower garden if you're growing inside. It, it uses very little energy. Um, the whole light kit, as bright as it is, is only pulling 125 watts of power. Um, which I think is very low. When I first started growing inside with the with the first tower garden, um, I run my lights 18 hours a day inside. And I think I noticed a difference between the, you know, the pump turning it on and off 
and running the lights that amount of time, a, a difference of about $6 a month in my utility bill. So it, was, it wasn't significant um, at all. Um, but those lights are designed to create lush, compact plants. Um, and it really, it really helps the, the plants thrive. So it's much easier than traditional gardening by far. Um, it's easy to install. It's easy to maintain. Um, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, various climate changes um, it, like you would um, if you had a traditional garden, you can't, I can't up and move those beds wherever I need to. And then if it's freezing outside and I've planted something out, then I'm running to cover them up. You don't have to do any of that. You just roll the tower garden off to where, you know, where it gets some shelter and, and you're good to go. It does grow three times faster than plants grow in the soil. And there's no dirt, there's no digging and no weeding, which I love. The older I get, the the harder it is for, for me to kind of scoop down in those beds and actually pull weeds and stuff. So this has made it a lot easier. This is my tower garden inside that first um, winter. And what I like about the produce that you grow on the tower garden is it's, it's vine ripened. So it's packed with nutrients. It's, it's got more nutrients than you, you would get from produce that you buy in the grocery store. When you think about when you buy organic in the grocery store, one, it's picked long before it's peak so that it can get to the store and it's not overripe by the time we buy it. Um, but not only that, you have control over your, I plant only organic seeds. I know my plants are fully organic from start to finish, where if you buy organic in the store, the transport process is not always organic. They use chemically treated tarps to cover up the produce to keep it from ripening during transit. And then it gets to the store and then, you know, it sits, it sits there. This, this is truly tower to table. I will walk over to that tower garden and I pick a salad almost daily and I pick it and I, sometimes I don't even wash it. I just, I just chop it up and put it on the plate. You can taste a huge difference in the, in the taste of the plants. Um, my daughter is a vegetarian and she, when she came, she was so excited to try, um, a salad from the tower garden. And she kept saying, oh my gosh, this tastes so different. It tastes so different. And it does. It tastes really good. You'll never want to go back to store-bought lettuce ever again. Um, but you can grow a tower garden just about anywhere. Schools are, are using them for, for learning purposes. Tower garden farms are popping up in areas where, you know, they're dead desert areas where you know water is an issue um people are putting them on their decks in their apartments it, all you need is such a small amount of space that people are putting them just about anywhere that they can put them and they want to have more control over over you know their produce especially when we first went through covid you know and you'd go to the grocery store and all the shelves were bare and, you know, lots of the shelves were bare in the produce section, you know, more and more people started gardening um, as a result of that. But also businesses are using it for farm to table menus um, as well. So, and I don't know if any of you have been in the Chicago O'Hara airport, but there's a tower garden farm in the airport and they use a lot of that produce for the restaurants that are in the, that are in the airport. Tower Garden benefits um, children um, as well as family. It provides a means for educating children about health and nutrition. Um, studies have shown that children have increased academic performance as a result of um, learning how to take care of these plants. They form a real connection to nature and it teaches personal responsibility as well as it boosts their confidence and pride. Now, I am not a child by any stretch of the imagination but I will tell you how much pride do you get when you have grown something yourself and you put it on the table and you feed your family with it and we do it all the time and so I am I'm very you know I'm very excited that I'm able to provide for our family that way and and I have so much growing I end up giving a lot of it away um, during the summer as well because we can't eat it as fast as it, it's growing but it's a way for families to bond. It's the way for kids to enjoy learning. 
and kids eat more of what they grow and you don't need a green thumb. You don't have to have any gardening experience at all to actually grow in a tower garden, which is really nice. Now I did a price comparison. This, there, there was a study done um, at a tower garden farm in Atlanta and I decided I was gonna update it. Um, so I went to all the local stores um, in my area, the major box stores in my area and looked at organic produce and what it costs um, for produce. And the one I like to talk about is the Swiss chard. Now I will plant a Swiss chard plant in my tower garden and that will last a good six months before I'm actually pulling it out and putting a new plant in there. And I have really big leaves. Some of the leaves are so big that I can, it will hide my whole face. It's crazy how big they get. But a bunch of organic Swiss chard in the grocery store, um, you get about six to, to seven sprigs of Swiss chard. It's about um, $2.99 a bunch. Now, when I count all of the times that I've picked off of that tower garden over the course of that six months, you're looking at about 26 bunches of Swiss chard. And so when you look at the cost savings and, and, you know, how much produce you can get from one plant in comparison to going to the store and actually buying that one plant um, or that one item, um, it's significant. Um, I have been growing in my tower gardens. This is my fourth growing season now. And I will tell you, I don't shop in the produce section of the grocery store at all, unless it's something that I can't grow like in the winter time, like squash, that kind of stuff. Um, but all my herbs, my vegetables, um, my leafy vegetables, my tomatoes, I grow all myself. I don't, I don't buy those at all. I haven't bought them in years. Um, the other nice thing about um, the tower garden is um, when you pick um, produce off of the tower garden, you know, like the bins in the bottom of your refrigerator, I call those the bins where vegetables go to die. Because when you go grocery shopping and you put your vegetables down in those bins, sometimes they're slimy before you even get to use them. And so what I have noticed is because I'm picking at the peak of ripeness, I will like I go away. We go to Colorado every year at Christmas for three weeks and I will pick a lot of the produce that's on the tower garden and I will put it in the refrigerator, but I put it in Ziploc bags and squeeze all the air out. And my lettuce, when we come back, is still fresh. It's like I just picked it and we chop it up and we and we eat it. So it really is economical, not only from a standpoint of cost savings over over time, but as well as the amount of waste that you have is minimal in comparison to, you know, when you're buying from the grocery store. And these are just the cost breakdowns of the models, um, you know, with lights. Um, if you're growing inside, they're less without lights, um, but it just depends on what your growing preference is. And really, I mean, it's probably the best investment. I call it a kitchen appliance. This is my best kitchen appliance that I have. Um, and it really is the gift that keeps giving because I'm constantly picking off of here and, and feeding family and friends. And it's, it, it's been the best thing I've ever invested in. And that's my presentation. I love it, Shondalyn. So many, so many great comparisons to look at the pricing um, and all that. But why don't we open this up for um, discussion and questions? Because I think that's when all of us learn so much. So um, does anyone have questions? Nancy, can, hear you. can you unmute Nancy? Let's see. Should be on the bottom of your screen. There you go. <laughs> I wondered if the lights were interchangeable between the flex and the uh, home one. It's the same. They The same unit fits on the top of, of both of them because that tube that, that it's sitting on, that's all the same Okay. Um, on both models just the amount of the water <clears throat> and um, 
it. But is it important that the lights go vertically as they are on that setup? I mean, we have some grow lights that are, you know, the typical horizontal fluorescent type fixtures. I mean, if you hung one of those things, uh, would it? No. I think it would be different because I have grow lights that are horizontal that I use just specifically for my seedlings. Uh -huh. But when you're planting up that tube, you want light to evenly be hitting it all the way around. And there's no way to really mount those on your unit. It's just easier to just have it mounted from the top and then you can move those arms and right. position. Oops. Yeah, I think because they're adjustable, it's so nice because you can just kind of rotate them. And I don't know. I love those lights. The, that's our new model of lights. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah it looks nice. And what dolly do you use with the Flex? Um, I have the dolly that you can get from the company. Um, oh. Yep, there's a dolly that you can put under it. And I do recommend that because if mm -hmm. you try and move that without a dolly, not only is it really heavy, but then you run the risk of cracking the bottom of your your reservoir. Um, and it's just easier just to move it and it's more stable on that dolly. The ones I saw, none of them were on dolly. So uh, do you take it off and put it on? No, I actually, before I plant, like I ordered the dolly right away. And so before I even filled it with water, yeah, I put it on the dolly, but you you could actually go to the website and get the dolly. It's on it's on the Tower Garden website. Okay, thank good, you. Good uh -huh. Questions? Who else has questions? Shondalyn, can I get that breakdown of the um the groceries, <laughs> the organic? You can. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice comparison, really. I love how yeah. you I would like that too. Yeah, just explaining with the, the Swiss chart, just taking one item and seeing, you know, and produce has gone up so much, right? It's crazy. Um, you were talking about, um, earlier you were talking about the amount of seeds that you put in your rock wall. I think it depends because like I grow heads of lettuce versus clusters of lettuce. And so I typically, if I put, if I start off with more than two seeds in a rock wool, I will thin them out and I will propagate it and create a second plant with it. And I do like, just, I'll have like one head versus a whole bunch of smaller heads. Does that make sense? So Shondalyn, should I break mine up? Well... Mm. If you know what you're doing, I would recommend you do it. I think your plants get bigger and they're healthier that way too. Um, but if you, you've got to be really careful to make sure that you're not breaking the roots when you're pulling it out of the rock wall. And then you've got to cut your new rock wall in half. It's a lot. I'm crazy. So don't, don't always do everything that I say. But if you, that's only because I want to save the plant and use that plant. But you can thin them. You can cut like, especially if you planted cherry tomatoes and you put more than one seed in there and you've got more than one plant, just cut the weaker of the two plants. Just trim it off at the at the base. And then you'll just have one really strong plant. Okay. I think the big thing with Tower Garden growing is you, I've been growing it eight years, Kirky. I think you've grown it longer than me. The longer you do this, you learn more as you grow. And it's just nice. You also learn what you're going to eat more of. So those are the plants you're probably going to, you know, want to plant more. Um, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't know about you, for you all that have Tower Gardens that you're already growing in, Sometimes I'll have a plant in there that's not doing so great in one area, but I'll pop that basket out and put it someplace else and it totally takes off. So it's just, it's interesting how sometimes, you know, it's like, it's not doing so great in one area, but you can move it to another area and it, and it just goes crazy. So I wish I'd have we, known that before I tossed mine out. <laughs> Just don't be afraid to move them because you can. You can pop those baskets out and move those plants around. Mm -hmm. 
especially when they're smaller. Right. I'm ready to plant some Swiss shards. I mean, um, not that. I'm sorry. I have that. Um, um, oops. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm getting ready to um plant some. What was it? Bok choy. Oh, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. But yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've experimented with a lot of vegetables that I didn't typically grow out in the in the regular raised beds that I'm growing in the tower garden, and I love them. I mean, it's like you really you introduce yourself to all kinds of new varieties of produce that way, and things that you wouldn't typically see in a grocery store. Yeah, I think you definitely. I've definitely tried things I had never eaten before, and. Um... At, for those of us, you know, some of us love our smoothies. We we work with the Juice Plus company and we make a smoothie every day with the protein powder. I love picking the um, kale or spinach off the tower so it's fresh every time I make my smoothie. But like you were saying, you eat it as, you know, you pick it as you eat it. So it's mm -hmm. not getting gross and slimy. It's it's so rich and nutritious. Delicious. Yeah. What else? Any other questions? Um, I know uh, you said you planted your seedlings. Did you um, separate them or are they all in one big? Did you separate the, the rock wool cubes apart or are they all in one sheet still? Let's, uh -oh. um, I, I just used it as a cube. They had that shown in the picture and I keep a quarter of an inch of water um, underneath it and the vermiculite on top um i just did it the other day so they said not to use the lights till you see the seedlings are right right and the other thing that i would recommend is to separate your cubes because as your plants get larger in there okay. and you're struggling to break that apart you run the risk of breaking the plant oh okay you know? and so if you separate your cubes it just makes it a little bit easier you know, so that you can just pop. I'll do in. that. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Thank you. So they're individualized. Wow. We we just used it as a. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll probably have more questions when I do this. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> this has been lovely. I love to see all the pictures and. Oh, with the lights, you could have all this in the middle of winter. Yeah. We're in New Hampshire where yeah. the sun don't shine in the winter. That's it. So um, it will well, be. Well, you just nice. have to get you some lights to go with your flex in the wintertime and you'll be good to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. So yeah, you're going to love it. The indoor is almost, I almost prefer it to outdoor growing because it is harder to get fresh produce in the stores and yeah. then just, you know to be able to mine's in my basement as well so i can just walk downstairs and pick it and it's amazing wow oh so, yeah anyone else denise did you have any questions this is probably for maybe somebody's first introduction to it it's a little um Peace. probably a little kind of uh shy and then she <clears throat> She actually muted because um, her son is quite the busy. Yeah. Oh, no. So he no. was real, real loud. So she she just kind of uh, muted. But Denise lives in uh, Jersey. And she had been looking at um, my tower and some pictures that um, I sent. Honey, honey, can you use the Some pictures that um, I had sent her. And um, so she was she she was really liking it. So I told her to um, if she was available to come on tonight and see Shondaland because Shondaland be growing hers like a farmer. 
<laughs> and I'm gonna come over there and take some of hers and reserve mine. <laughs> well, and we, you know, what we like to do is do this once a month, and Shondaland's gracious enough to do this again. And I think what we, what I love is we are always learning something. It's great to have the questions at the end because everybody's learn learns when you ask the questions. So I'm really happy. And, it's, and you really that. don't really know until you actually start growing in it. That's really when the questions start popping up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, we we try and do one a month for these. So well, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks We're for joining us. Off. And everybody have a great night. I'm gonna stop the recording.